Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Welcome one, welcome all. I am Katie Patrick, joined as always by David Fiorazzo. Yes. And his two thumbs. Yes. Now, just a reminder that uh, Freedom Project Academy, have you heard of it? Well, let me tell you a little bit more about it. It is our K-12 Judeo-Christian online school. And right now, Ooh. right this moment, yes. we are enrolling students for the fall. Tell us so more. You, you need to find out about this and how you can enroll your students for this upcoming fall by visiting Freedom for school.com. You're going to get a free information packet if you go to that. Oh, what was it again? Oh, yes. Freedom, F O R school.com. And when you go there and you request your free information packet, and then you decide how amazing it is, and you decide to enroll your student into Freedom Practice Academy, all you have to do is tell them, educated sent you. Educated. You just write in there one little word. Who sent you here? Educated. All right. Well, to the task at hand. One in four, that's 25%, for those of you who aren't math inclined, one in four high school students now claims to be LGBTQ in all the other letters. And this is according to the CDC. So what caused that number to double in just six little years time? One in four. David. Okay, we're going to talk about that, Katie, but I think the CDC lost quite a bit of credibility since 2020 no. and, and what they consider science. But a couple key words here in that setup that Katie was just talking about claim to be LGBTQ or the word identify as meaning five, 10 years from now, they'll be back to who God made them to be their biological sex. But um, yes, a record one in four high school students. This is not adults. I think that percentage is around seven, which is a lot higher than it was. But uh, this is not a huge portion of the population. But when you talk about Gen Generation Z and young people, this is what uh, the most programmed generation in history. We talked about that a couple months ago. But we've got a setup video. Watch this. We'll come back and talk about it. The CDC surveyed over 17,000 students in 152 schools nationwide. Those numbers showing in 2021, 26% identified as LGBTQ. There's always change in language, always change in what's accepted, or at least accepted within um, a certain percentage of the community. These numbers, an expert with MSU says is surprising, but can be explained. The one in four number is surprising, but at the same time, if you if you drill down into the actual data, it, it only shows that about 3.2% of youth identified as gay or lesbian. Um, in the last five, 10, 15 years, it's, we've really opened up space for people to explore their identity. Those questioning or not, being more comfortable around having conversations surrounding how you identify. Most teenagers do not feel normal. They feel like they're different than everybody else and they're really struggling. And I think some of that struggle of being a teenager, um, you know, has just kind of come together with these issues of gender and sexual identity. Changing times and social media playing a role too, with support being at your fingertips. The 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, things keep changing. If you were gay, lesbian, or trans at that time, you had to go to libraries and find information, or you know, you had to find a resource in your community, and they weren't always that accessible. Okay, there's a lot going on here, Katie, and I, we could really do a full hour show on, on this topic, because if you go back to, I mean, the 19, 1948, there were changes in the government-run education system. There were changes in our culture. If you go back in American history, whether that be radical feminists, whether that be Margaret Sanger, who promoted adultery and sexual freedom and birth control, whether that be Alfred Kinsey, who was a sexologist and, and talked about these perverted sexual experiments that he had with kids to 
to promote the fact that humans were sexual beings and you can't stop them at any age. Anyway, this was the thinking that started to develop at the ac level in academia and the universities. And then of course in the high schools, K through 12. So these are the things that started to be implemented in psychology, in sex, quote, education. Here we are today. Let me just go to 22 years ago. There was an article titled this 22 years ago. It said, I'm talking about television now, gays on primetime, 22 years ago. Remember in 1997, I believe it was Ellen DeGeneres was the first to come out as lesbian. And then since, let's see, 1978, I'll go back that far. Billy Crystal was the first gay character on a nighttime show called Soap. He played a homosexual. So starting in the 70s, a decade after the sexual the revolution, right? The hippie revolution, the make love, not war. Adultery is okay. Homosexuality is fine. Feminism, yes. Abortion, great. They started dumbing America down and using the word gay as often as they possibly could. They got this into the schools, and we know what the education in air quotes is when it comes to health, sex, biology, and these topics. Social studies was moved in, right? So mm -hmm. I know I covered a lot there, and that wasn't specific to the study, but it makes the point that we are the most programmed generation in history, and this is why these young people, they're being bombarded by every angle. Hollywood, the media, social media, the government, corporations, and if you trust the CDC, I don't, but I'm, I'm sure they did you know, as best they could here on this report. But I would love to hear your thoughts, Katie. Well, I could go on all day on this. Because yes, you could. I'm getting off my soapbox now momentarily. Okay, fine. Thank you for... You're, you're welcome. Stepping. There we go. Equal now, time. This was <laughs> the, the biannual Youth Risk Behavior Surveillance Survey. I love that they call it the Surveillance Survey. And so it's like self-reported by these kids. And here's the thing. Teenagers, everyone wants to be unique. They want to be special. So they... Let's break it down. Even within saying that they are something other than being like straight and uh, cisgender, you know, all the terminology that we now mm -hmm. are being, I guess, forced to use to identify what used to just be like, oh, here are boys and girls, whatnot. Anyway, <clears throat> they, they have to break it down so to such minutia now that we have 26% uh, percent identifying as LGBTQ. Identify. 12.2% identifying as bisexual. Identify. 5.2% identifying as questioning. Identify. 3.9% identifying as other. Identify as other. Yeah, right? But then we have 3.2% as gay or lesbian. Confusing. So, then, so that is also, I think they are also like, so if gay or lesbian is in the 3.2, but then in the 26, you have LGBTQ. L and G is in there. Yeah. But then the B stands for bisexual so then the 12.2 see that see how this all breaks how they're all breaking themselves down yeah into that why don't you 1.8 percent though did not understand the question all right what was the que what was the question so you see again? how they have this and then they have to break it all down and it's such minutia and then within it and it's this is what our generation this current yeah. generation and even to the extent uh, the youngest of millennials which I am not, I am in the older part of my generation, but in the youngest of millennials and then going now into Gen Z, the programming you're talking about, the indoctrination, yep. the not being able to think for themselves so that they are, they are just going along with the crowd more than ever to detrimental rates of harm for themselves and then for the, all of those who actually, I guess, identify as they don't even know Yep. and how detrimental that is showing, proving to be for them. Well, it's an increase in acceptance from both parents and society. That was in the article. Yeah. And also toward the end of the article, um, some said the rising rates of LGBT identifying children is a result of indoctrination in schools. That's kind of what we just really explained mm -hmm. in different ways. You cannot get away from it year round, and we're not even in June, Katie Patrick, Pride Month, Oh. And, and rainbow rainbows everywhere Mafia. and they have hijacked the rainbow by the way from the biblical story the of true story in genesis about god's covenant and flooding the earth but anyway they've made it their own and they've got support with uh, media corporations and everything else so. yeah and it's only going to get worse i mean this yeah. trend line was you know pretty much staying the same for decades in terms of people who identify as 
LGBTQ or it used to just well, be that like LG. Yeah, it wasn't even a le- word. Being lesbian years or ago. gay, and then LGBT B, bisexuals came in, and then T, transgender, and then Q, queer, and then a plus and A and two spirit and all this other stuff. Yeah. But you see how it just whoosh, spiked, and it's going to continue to spike more yeah. and more the more it gets pushed out here. I wonder why this is this generation that's like. Well, I, I want to be in the the know, in the now, in the what's acceptable by the parents and by the media and what the teachers are telling us. Well, I don't want to be that. There, it's becoming the I'm the weirdo if I'm, you know, cisgender, straight, Christian, white male specifically. But anyway. are you targeting a certain person or people group? Anyway, still to come, what does it say when nearly 700 professors and academics at the University of North Carolina come out against teaching the U.S. Constitution in college. We're going to talk about that one next. Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Project Academy. Take back your kids' education. FPA's fully accredited classical curriculum provides live, on-demand, and homeschool courses built on Judeo-Christian values. Request your information packet and save 10% on tuition by visiting freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. <sighs> you know, back in my day. Yes, Katie, tell when us. When school was school and when this country cared about its origins and its truths and everything that makes this country a country exceptional exceptional we you once Uh-oh. upon a time anyway <laughs> get it out let it get it out. i know this, i know this you're one, having a hard time this, with one, this one this one hurts because this country has a document it actually has a couple documents it does have um you might call it a creed it, 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 some would say a creed isn't there I, it's old parchment paper just ignore that oh, okay. right there now right. um this old, <laughs> this this old document, a couple old documents. Yes, you may have just seen them there. Um, they're called the Constitution, and we first had to have a Declaration of Independence so that we could eventually come up with this thing called a Constitution. It's actually the law of the land. In case you didn't know, David, just really, much. it is. Yeah, I know. But wait a minute, they don't hun- treat it like that. Oh, at least not down there in North Carolina, where we have hundreds of academics and faculty members at the university of North Carolina, go Tar Heels, I believe, right? They are opposing a bill in the state legislature that would require students take a course on the U.S. Constitution and other key American documents. Okay, so... How is that, like, you should know this. In college... You should know this. You should should just know this. And it shouldn't... Honestly... well, they should speak, teach it in college because they don't teach it in high school. That, well, that's my counter argument. Like, it, the only reason I would say you would oppose that bill is because it should have an amendment to say it should be taught earlier. <laughs> we shouldn't have to wait till college. Everybody as a citizen here should know it. But anyway, let's get back to this. We have a letter that was signed by 673 professors from UNC Chapel Hill, okay. and it called two proposed bills and other efforts undertaken by the Board of Governors and the Board of Trustees on campus and attack on the principles of economic or academic freedom and shared governance, which is hilarious to me because when you talk about like academic freedom and freedom and freedom, it's like, where do you get that freedom from? Oh, those documents that you don't want anyone to know about. I digress. Now, one of the bills, House Bill 715, and I'm guessing this is where a lot of them actually why they signed on to this letter is because it would eliminate tenure at UNC. And basically all those professors who have tenure are like, I want my tenure so I can't get fired for wow. being an idiot and signing onto a letter like this. Now, um, instead they want to put in place a contract system of one to four year contracts. This would give the board of trustees authority to ensure efficient use of institutional resources, including regularly evaluating and eliminating unnecessary or redundant expenses, oh, right. personnel and areas of study. Now I'm guessing that's Jeez. mostly why these 673 professors signed on to this letter more so even than the not teaching the constitution, but they were like, it's all about me, 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 me and my job. Come what on. other job career out there do you have it where you sign on and you get it for life? Yeah. yeah. The Supreme Court and, very, and basically anyone in Congress. Very uncommon. 
But you had me, I mean, we've just, we just have to stop and mention the altar of DEI. Yeah, yes. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is in every university. And look up Chris Rufo. He does some great work exposing this, um, which is really like a religious cult almost that wants to mask. Use the, they use DEI to mask tyranny. But these words, regularly evaluating and eliminating unnecessary or redundant expenses, personnel, and areas of study, that is foreign language to the <laughs> education system. That is That's foreign why they're language like, How dare they? to... K through 12 and the university system, they don't eliminate unnecessary or redundant. They just blow up the budget and get more. Well, we need more money. Okay, so send them more money. Raise the, raise tuition costs. More We need more money. We need raises. We need to have more, more departments. We need to have under DEI. We need to have all these positions and all these salaries and all these woke activities on campus under mm -hmm. DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Sorry, Katie, Preach I triggered. On. Preach on. I triggered when I saw it's a you joke were, that, yeah. that, that they would evaluate unnecessary or redundant expenses, personnel, and areas of study. Well, and that's why the Sorry. pressers don't want to do it, and that's why they're offended. Now, the second bill, the bill that we <laughs> actually kicked this whole thing off with, would require that all college students before graduation take an American history course that <gasps> includes reading the U.S. Constitution, yes. the Declaration of Independence, no way. the Emancipation Proclamation, uh -oh. at least five essays from the Federalist Papers, <gasps> Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from a Birmingham jail, and the Gettysburg Address. I mean, I, you had me until Gettysburg Address. I mean, I can't spend all my time reading that long, long document. If you know the Gettysburg Address. It's yes, it's not that short. long. That's um, the whole joke. I'm Hopefully you out there just understand because you actually care about things like this. I would love to do like a random test of oh. uni university students in all the states, whatever state, and ask, go, go and ask them what these are. The Constitution Declaration, the Emancipation Proclamation, the Federalist Papers, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s Letter whoa, from whoa, the Jail, whoa, whoa, and Gettysburg whoa. Address. David. Would they know? Could they to define David. and talk about each one of those? We're not even to that point. Okay. Go Sorry. just you YouTube any video, and some of these people can't name what are the three countries in North America or name <laughs> other than right. the United States, name one country or name four states of the United States. Or they the, can't do it. Or the they three, can't, they can't do simple no, things you learn in elementary school. Three branches they, of government. They By can't the way, tell a clock. They haven't learned how to tell time on a clock anymore. That's like passe. Like months ago we did that. We did a show on yeah. this where they, what, what's, what countries border, the United States, oh, yeah, and, and someone came up with like Europe or I don't, yeah, some I don't know, say Europe, they um, like that's South right. America. What what are our border? <sighs> Canada, Mexico. They didn't know the answer hurts. to the simplest. My head. Yeah, hurts. it it really does hurt, especially if I come yeah. from a family of educators, As and it's just I. sad. But I don't think they yeah. would know even in college what some of this was. Oh, maybe no, no. I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt, Katie. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Now the you know you. Uh, University of North Carolina professors also took issue with the Board of Governors ongoing assault on diversity, equity, and inclusion oh, efforts. See, there it is. The you assault. found it. The assault. So as their letter stated, led by people apparently opposed to equity and made comfortable, uncomfortable by the concept <laughs> of inclusion, these anti-DEI efforts violate the First Amendment, which is hilarious, uh, and interfere with the unfettered pursuit of truth and enlightenment. Oh my goodness. Anti-DEI efforts. Do you do you see what you're saying there? You meant you actually mentioned the First Amendment. <laughs> and you're talking about how you don't want students to be required to take a course where they learn the full the First Amendment. <laughs> ah, my head's gonna explode. But <clears throat> we're gonna move on from this because coming up, we have a new study that finds just about 13% of 8th graders are testing proficiently in U.S. history, <laughs> while civics test scores have dropped for the first time ever. But don't worry. It can all be blamed on <clears throat> the thing. COVID. 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 For at least the next 10 years, that's what they'll use. So anyways, stay with us. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on pristine quality bedding, towels, slippers, signature pillows, and much more when you use the code educated that's e-d-u-c-a-t-e-d -E educated support this show and a great american company
were you with us 30 seconds ago? Because if you were, you understand the necessity of our educators to teach our children about the founding documents and why this country is a country. Yes, what makes a country? <sighs> because right now, they clearly are not doing that. We are finding out very easily by reading the scores that our children don't understand U.S. history, and now civics has dropped its scores. Here's what's happening. The National Assessment of Education Progress, known as the NAEP scores, um, or the Nation's Report Card, you may have heard about that. They, they go by different acronyms, but the Nation's Report Card uh, reported back based on the test scores, it showed that in 2022, just 13% of eighth graders tested proficiently in U.S. history and civics test scores. Also saw the first ever drop in the subject area. First in ever. junior high is when you definitely, well, back in my day, is uh -huh. when you really learned American civics and you really got introduced to what's the U.S. Constitution, what's the Declaration of Independence. Yep. Now, we learned about those documents earlier than that, but really you like read them, you delved into it, you kind of got a, a true understanding. Not anymore because our civic scores are declining for the first time ever. Uh, I mean, going back to 1998 when all this type of testing actually started, it, it, we're just, we're going down. <laughs> crash burn is of what's going to happen well math and english if i remember right they started declining in the 80s oh well they have they it depends on yes which tests but okay the overall yeah. trend yes for sure back so in the 90s what are we, what are we, we looking started at going, here the trend in eighth grade civics average scores yep so i mean does it not look like it's that drastic oh katie why are you making a big deal of this because it is a big deal because this is this is talking about how we are as a country, how, how <clears throat> we can function in civil soci society. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have an understanding of that, everything else falls apart. Everything else falls apart because we need to know what the intent of this country was, that what we are agreeing upon mm -hmm. by living in this society, this society so that we can operate together without knocking each other's heads off. And it, where are we at today in terms of how we interact with one another? Is it good or is it bad? You tell me. Isn't that interesting you said, if we don't get a grasp on this, everything else falls apart. There is a purposeful deconstruction or a destruction of the country, whether that be the, the, the culture, the economy, the, and people don't understand how the, our founding and they don't understand the constitution. And it's interesting that they, uh, the left wants this to happen. The but scores to they decline. Do. They don't want kids to be able to, you know, think and critically think and understand these things. They want it to fall apart, as you said. Well, yeah. And if, if you don't have a, the way our constitution and our country is set up is this is a social contract with us. John Locke said it first. We were inspired by John Locke in many a way. And if we can't agree to live in a society under certain rules and kind of regulations outlined, which are outlined in the constitution, then we are doomed to fail. We will fail as a society. Now, specifically looking at what we have in front of us in terms of these test scores, there are going to be people who immediately are like, well, that COVID, it was COVID's fault, but That's we'll right. get back on track. Unbelievable. Fact check false. Because Peggy Carr, the commissioner of the National Center for Education Statistics, um, when interviewed, was said, said that for U.S. history, I was very, very concerned. It's a decline that started in 2014. 2014. Uh-huh. When did, when did the, the COVID I think start? it's called COVID-19. Ah, yes, so, not COVID-14. So, so this actually started, and she said that this was long before uh, we even thought about COVID. This is a decline that's been going down for a while. Now, in order to test proficient U.S. history, students must explain major turning points which now will probably be COVID uh, is a major turning point, uh, people and ideas in the country's past, according to what it, what it does. Only about 20% of eighth grade students passed the 2022 civics in U.S. history test. 20%? Yeah. That's abysmal. Test scores in both areas, U.S. history and civics, fell back in line with scores from the 1990s when the scores were first tracked. So maybe it's time now we just get rid of this test because... Why did they have the test to begin with? And they found how bad, and now they're, they were going to do better and, you know, increase scores. And now it's just going back. Just, just get rid of the test and actually teach the kids about things. Stop spending time on these stupid tests that are teaching them nothing. Teaching Ooh, them nothing. Very, very important principle that oftentimes, what, what, what was that one quote from um, 
when they're rolling out Common Core years ago, uh, teachers will teach to the test. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Remember that? Oh, do you remember that? That was what? What year are we in? That that was like twenty eleven. Yeah, that was thirteen 10? years ago. Yeah, something like that. Oh, David. We Coleman. were told they David told Coleman. Us, yeah. Look him up. We've talked about him. Yep, anyway, yep, yep. Oh, <laughs> take a breath, Katie. Off my own soapbox now. All right. Well. <laughs> Let's have a little happiness or a little laugh at least because we have our latest Babylon Bee headlines to discuss up next. If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. All right, before we wrap up this show for the day, let's take a look at everyone's favorite satire site, the Babylon Bee. Here are this week's top five Babylon Bee headlines. We've picked our favorites. Katie has not seen them. This is her first time seeing or hearing them. We will now decide which one should be named Queen of the Hive. We start with Biden deploys 1,500 troops at border to help register new voters. Number two, White House announces illegal immigration has decreased 90% since they redefined it. Number three, Biden campaign hires stunt double for high-risk stairs scene. <laughs> Number four, Disney execs baffled that Mario movie made one billion without any trans goombas. Goombas, what's the matter, you? And finally, AI, artificial intelligence, calculates it will be more efficient to just let humanity destroy itself. Mm. Oh my goodness, Katie, there are some good ones this week. There are. Those are funny. Can you? How do you? Uh, how do you pick mm. a winner? You try. You try real hard. You go first. Pick me a winner. No, you. You pick first. Well, I always pick first. I okay. Gentlemen I, first. All right. I thought I had. I I liked the the very. First one, the, the Biden deploying the troops, but I've got to go with the AI. I've got to go with the AI. AI calculates it will be more efficient to just let humanity destroy itself. That's what we're doing. You know what? It's basically a <laughs> summation of all the other headlines that came before it. Really, it's <laughs> like, okay, this is what we're working with, so we yeah, might as well. Exactly. But the simple fact What's yours? That, What's yours? that Karine Jean Pierre, world's worst press secretary in the history of press secretaries they redefined it the, yeah. i mean all you got to do just redefine it because that's all she does at the podium when she stated claiming you know oh well, well you know immigrate illegal immigration it's like uh it's it's been decreased by 90 percent uh yeah, yeah. Well, like, where how did could she... you just how could you stand up there and just say these things and everyone in the press corps is just going mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, well yep, let me, mm -hmm, yeah, let the, me get the exact quote yep yep that's right the mm -hmm. democrat media press corps but you i don't understand a how she can say it b how she can defend it because you that you can't defend that you can't pull out stats and say all right here's how i can prove what i just said and they don't they just scoot on to the next thing and no one's held accountable david what david what go with your last headline okay with with the how a we are going to destroy the ourselves. ai yeah yes because okay. that that's how they can get away with all of it because they just they, they don't just care. they just want to destroy that's the direction we're going everything yeah. all right yeah. what a way to end the show <laughs> yay yes a it. ai is going to take over a human being because, well they're not uh, even going to take over they don't have to force it because human beings are just going to do what they do best yep destroy them so anyway it's going to wrap up the headlines for this week more satire next time katie or just more truth uh, yeah more point. truth by the way truth truth is truth they say love is love Truth, truth is truth. Is truth. Let's make a T-shirt of that. Truth Ooh, what is do you think? truth. All right. Well, if you are a fan of our show, please um like, comment, share. If you're watching us on social media. Now for David and for myself. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, and thank you for supporting this show. Until next time, stay educated.